Hello. I'm going to be talking about the IRIST project. IRIST stands for Intercultural Education Resources for Erasmus students and their teachers. This is a three-year project starting in October 2012 and finishing in October 2015. And it's co-funded by the European Commission within the Lifelong Learning Program 2007-2013. The IRS Consortium is composed of 10 partners, seven full partners, which are all higher, uh, higher education institutions in Europe and three associate partners. These associate partners are particularly important because they represent each one of our target groups. The target groups are, first of all, potential, future, present, and past Erasmus students. Then, higher education institution teachers of intercultural communication, particularly in the context of student mobility. And finally, educational stakeholders, and in particular, international offices in higher education institutions. The project aims are, first of all, in terms of quantity, to increase the number of students taking part in the Erasmus program. And secondly, in terms of quality, in the sense of supporting Erasmus students and benefiting as much as possible from their international experience, particularly in terms of personal growth and intercultural learning. One of the deliverables of the project is what we call the intercultural path. This is made up of four modules to be taken before, during, and after study abroad. So, for example, a group of students leaving in September 2014 will be able to take part in a face-to-face module in the spring of 2014 organized by their home institution. Then, once they've left, once they are in their host institution, they will be able to take an online module, again organized by their home institution, in the autumn of 2014. The students traveling to one of the partner institutions will also be able to take part in a face-to-face -face module organized by the host institution again in the autumn of 2014. And finally, once they return home, they will be able to take part in a face-to-face -face module organized again by their home institution in spring 2015. One of the objectives of the, prog of the project is, of course, to foster the adoption of the intercultural path in other higher education institutions in Europe. And also that of realizing a web platform uh, in which all the materials will be placed, uh, which will support intercultural learning, both in teacher-mediated learning and courses and for student self-learning. So, um, I'd like to say a few words about the uh, theoretical framework behind the IRIS project, and in particular about the teaching objectives pertaining to all the modules. Of course, each of the modules then will also have some more focused objectives. The first set of objectives stems from a non-essentialist approach to culture. And what we hope is that students who take part in the IRS modules will be able to observe ways in which people reconstruct and renegotiate their own and other, uh, other people's identities depending on their experiences and on their encounters. That they will be able to reflect on each person's uniqueness, but also on the similarities and on the differences, where similarities are not necessarily seen as positive and differences as negative. And finally, to understand 
how different types of identities, for example, gender, age, or ethnic origin, impact on communication with others. The second set of uh, objectives stems from a critical approach to intercultural education. In this sense, we hope that students, by taking part in these modules, will be able to explore the role of power in dominant discourses, to consider the problematic nature of using certain terms like ethnicity, race, and nation to frame identity, and also to exercise the practice of interpreting what people say about their culture as evidence of what they wish to project and things that may not necessarily be applicable to others from that same culture or that same group. In order to identify what students consider to be uh, their needs in relation to their mobility experience, um, we designed a questionnaire informed by the literature on student mobility and submitted it to past, present, and future mobile students. The uh, questionnaire was designed in four languages, Italian, English, French, and Slovenian, and was made up of uh, 30 questions, um, both open and closed, um, relating to their study abroad uh, information and biodata, to the levels of satisfaction with the stay abroad, to the opinions and the recommendations on how best to prepare for study abroad, the criteria for considering their stay successful, and finally, their aspirations. We received in total 3,152 responses from all over Europe. So if we turn to the question about what makes a study abroad experience successful, we gave the students 31 criteria and asked them to choose the three top criteria and the three least important criteria for considering their experience successful. <clears throat> Among the um, top three criteria, we find, for example, becoming more independent, gaining another perspective on the way that things are at home, and finally interacting with people from different origins. Among the least important criteria, we find getting good grades, feeling European, and learning to behave like the local people. These um, findings uh, have been used to inform our materials for the modules. The second question concerned the importance of making friends with local and other international students. And here we can see an interesting trend throughout the mobility cycle. Before they leave, students give more or less as much importance to making friends with international students than making friends with local students. But throughout their study abroad, and particularly when they return, the trends change. And we can see that once they return, they consider 30% of them consider important to make friends with international students, uh, while only about 7% consider it important to make friends with local students. These findings can be interpreted in two ways, in our opinion. Either um, the experience of being part of an international community um, has the effect of making students um, aware of the importance of making friends with international students much more than making friends with local students. Another possibility is that, in fact, the students are simply stating what was their, ex their experience. In other words, the difficulty that they found with making friends with local students. Another question pertains to how students prepare for their study abroad. And here we can see that the majority of students prepare individually for study abroad, either by contacting people who have already had a similar experience or by a personal exploration of the host culture and the destination country. Whereas only 22% of them take part in activities that are organized by the home university before departure. And only 14 of them take 
academic courses on culture or intercultural ed uh, education. The final question concerned what the students considered that their home university should provide once they returned from their study abroad. And we can see from the quotes uh, reported here that many students considered it important to have the possibility to reflect and share their experiences of study abroad. So to go back to the practicalities of the intercultural paths within the IRS project, the first module will take part between March and June in 2014 in five partner institutions, Bologna, Durham, Helsinki, Copper and Leuven. Each of these modules is made up of a number of activities and module one is composed of four activities, each lasting between nine and 12 contact hours. The activities relate to perceptions of self and others. There is an anti-discrimination and racism study circle, exploring stories and narratives of student mobility, and encountering otherness abroad. An activity consists of a set of tasks, and together they cover Kolb's four modes of learning based on his um, framework of experiential learning. The implementation of these activities will be video recorded and evaluated by a team of external advisors before rendering them public on the uh, project website. These activities have been designed with flexibility in mind in order to foster exploitation by additional higher education institutions in the future. So two forthcoming IRIS events. The first is a symposium, Intercultural Universities in Europe, Proposals from the IRIS Project, which will take place on the 27th of March 2014 at the University of Pomorska in Slovenia. The second is an international conference, Teaching the Intercultural in Context of Student Mobility, which will take part on the 12th and 13th of June 2014 at the University of Bologna in Italy. Bear in mind that the deadline for abstract submission is the 31st of January 2014. Thank you very much for your attention. If you wish to receive further information, uh, don't hesitate to visit our website and to subscribe to our newsletter. Thank you.